This is going to be your guide to getting every mythical Pokemon in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So first thing you need to do is head on over to Floroma Town if you want Mew and Jirachi, but you need to have save data for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and Pokemon Sword and Shield if you want to get both of these mythicals. So you just enter the town and then you talk to this old couple right here. If I've been to Kanto before, which means Pokemon Let's Go, you get Mew. Just like that. And then it's going to be the same thing for Jirachi if you talk to this man right here. Now, there is a very important note. This is only once per game. So it's not going to be like, oh, every time you make a save file, you can reset for another Mew or Jirachi. No, that's it right there. And that's going to be it for my games. But free Mew and Jirachi if you have played Pokemon games before. That's pretty cool. Now, if you want to get Manaphy, you need to get access to the Mystery Gift, which is unlocked after defeating the third gem. So then, for now, all you have to do is get via internet, and then you connect to the internet, search for gifts, and then you can also get the Platinum Clothing Gift, as well as the Manaphy Egg. Now, if you don't know this by now, you hatch Manaphy, and then you breed it with a Ditto, and that is how you get Fion in Generation 4, or just any modern Pokemon game. But there we go, we now have the Manaphy Egg, and even has like a special egg animation, so that's pretty cool, or Sprite. Now, the Manaphy Egg is an early purchase bonus, so you will need to at least beat the third gem and then connect to the Mystery Gift by February 21st, 2022, if you want to receive the egg, and... Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, as for Celebi, Celebi is the only mythical Pokemon not available inside these games at all. But there was recently a Celebi event to promote the new Pokemon movie, Secrets of the Jungle. So I'm guessing when Pokemon Home becomes available in 2022, that is how you can expect to get a Celebi. Let's talk about Shaman and Darkrai. So if I can just get three mythical Pokemon right now for free like that, what about... Darkrai and Shaman because they were a little tricky to get in the original Diamond Pearl games because they required special items member card for the Darkrai and this was going to be through a mystery gift download and then Oak's letter for the Shaman once again special mystery gift limited time event well it's the same and at least their data is in the game so there's like some weird stuff going on with how like the brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl data mine broke down and just information about the games um uh, once the 1.1 patch came out, then all everything for the Mythical Pokemon events became available. So the Sea Break, Path, and Flower Paradise in-game event for Shaman are now fully functional. So with people hacking things in for the game, they were able to find, hey, if we hack in the Oak's Letter, the Shaman event, it actually works. So the only thing missing is the Pokemon Company making the item fully available. And then you have the full Shaman event. Also, for Shiny Hunters, know that the Runaway method was possible in Diamond, and Pla Pearl, and Platinum works here as well. Encounter Shaman, run away, go to Sea Break Path, come back to the Flower Paradise, and Shaman will be there again. So it's going to be a faster method than soft resetting, but you need to wait until the Oaks letter is available. And that's the same thing for the Darkrai. Darkrai event in the game, Darkrai works, has all that stuff going on, but you need to get the item for it to become available. And then the big question is, what about Arceus? The Azure Flute was unreleased in the original games. Where is it in Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl all of these years later? Well, according to Datamine, event scripting for Darkrai and Shaman have been revised now appear in their final form. So that's with the 1.1 update. The Arceus event script has been deleted. As expected, no more Hall of Origin event. So there was some kind of beta testing or some kind of data. There's an inaccessible level 80 Arceus Hall of Origin with two references to text lines. Those got removed with the update, so who even knows. Also, to connect online to get the member card and Oaks letter when they do eventually become available, you will need to update your game to be able to connect online. So none of like the version 1.0 having improper shaman and dark Rise stuff will affect anyone and all you need to do is stay tuned to official pokemon social media they will be announcing those events soon and that is how you get access to all the available legendary pokemon in brilliant diamond shine pearl but what's the point of having them don't use them in battle all right i just spent almost an hour putting these ideas together because the there's no trs so there's no trs there's no tutors we have some modern moveset updates it's kind of weird with these mythical pokemon and no one's really made movesets for them yet so i'm kind of going in half blind but a lot of the old ideas or the traditional ways of running not even traditional just the ways that you run these mythical pokemon in any pokemon game seem to still hold up and starting with mew you just go for physical tank 
wall you hate on any Pokemon that is trying to use its attack stat. With this, you can switch in on a Scarf Garchomp Outrage and then just tank it. It does less than 50% damage. So you switch in and then you roost until Garchomp is confused or switches out. You get a Will-O-Wisp on a physical Pokemon. That cuts their attack down even more and then you just whittle them down with Stab and Coverage. It just kind of works, and Leftovers is also keeping you healed up really nicely. Pretty much anything that isn't Garchomp using its strongest move, or like a high attack Pokemon using high base power physical move, you switch in, you Will-O-Wisp, you tank three hits, even if like you're getting outsped on all of them, and then you just roost it all back up. No problems whatsoever for the Mew, and then you just completely destroy their soul. You can also do a couple of other things with the Mew. Uh, max special attack, max speed, timid nature, and calm mind is an idea so now we're just hurting them and depending on how much calm mind you like it's like well we have the roost so i mean like max hit points still makes us tanky and i think there might even be some like weird efficiencies to where something like that is maybe a little better lean a bit more into the defense keep that optimization up but again like we can just be easy be free right there uh four points into the defense then the idea behind actually because of calm mind we can even go like more this or something but who cares like it's it's Mew it's mythicals free format is going to be madness especially when Darkrai and Shaman become available also legendary Pokemon are, are allowed so it kind of depends on like what what's going in with the meta but yeah just do this and you're gonna be fine so you go in on that call mind you set it up and then Psy Shock is for the stab also the coverage Blissey really doesn't like seeing a Psy Shock uh, yeah, that's what I mean it's like Skarm Bliss also means like Ice Beam it's like why, why do I care about Garchomp when Skarmory is actually the threat here and can wall me out. So that's where the Thunderbolt comes into play. It's so like this dunks on Skarm Bliss minus the Whirlwind. But I mean, like, if you have a Calm Mind going in, you're still hurting Skarmory a lot. And you can still get away with quite a bit right here. Leftovers healing you up with the Roost, Calm Mind making that stronger. If you don't really care about the Blissey too much, I'm always a fan of Bolt Beam. Bolt Beam doesn't get enough representation with how good it covers. Now, I haven't really looked at the, like, damage calculator for, or not damage, uh, the type calculator for Gen 4 specifically, but I, if I recall, Bolt Beam is just perfect coverage until, like, super modern Pokemon, so I don't see that why that would have changed, and Fairy doesn't screw with that at all, so I'm pretty sure that this is just perfect coverage Mew. Pretty fun stuff. Um, then we can also look at the Jirachi. Jirachi is pure hate. Uh, let me double check to make sure they kept Serene Grace. They did. Yeah, good. that's it. You you go Paraflinch. You go Paraflinch, damagey Jirachi if you want to. You can also go Tank. Uh, the Tank numbers get kind of weird because that's when like you just go adamant for the most hurt you go like mostly hit points and then there is some kind of like speed ev breakdowns where you outspeed certain pokemon at certain times if it matters enough and it can matter for some like level 50 flat rules tyranitar comes in you kind of don't want to get you know it running away with dragon dance or something you can also do a lot of damage with an earthquake to a steel type pokemon like the jirachi actually no wait we're playing a different game right now it's it's going to be hard kind of rewiring your brain if you played the meta back in gen 4 because steel doesn't like steel doesn't block a uh, dark types anymore so actually getting stabbed super effective crunches onto the jirachi now which is something that didn't really happen back then so yeah like jolly that's gonna be 124 speed so if you just want to have like that baked in out speed consider 36 evs if tyrantar starts picking up also if like base 70 pokemon become a thing they can just start adjusting the evs to catch up to those numbers right there but like yeah this also works just fine because now it's tanky like okay cool they finally hit you it does nothing or with this you have like weird out speeds so then you just set up a sub or again you can just go max speed and then even I was about to say even adamant max, max speed, but not really. So like Jolly, th this just covers everything up to base 100. And with Garchomp in the game, fine, just go. Just be the ultimate hate. You're already playing mythical Pokemon. You're already kind of a scumbag. So you might as well go Togekiss, Jirachi. Togekiss just eats Earthquake and Outrage from the Garchomp, effectively making it unusable. And then Poison Jab onto the Togekiss, Jirachi is immune to. Boom. GG easy just like that. Uh, once again, Skarmory might get weird or threatening. So, like, Fire Punch, hitting it for super. Physical attacks and Skarmory don't really do too much. But, I mean, like, Fire Punching it and then Burning it might be alright. Um, any Pokemon you can paralyze as well. Like, after that Thunderbolt comes through, 
you're definitely going to be outspeeding it, which is the case for like adamant or just hit point investment. So it's like, yeah, you can deal with it then and everything's going to be good. But after that, it's pair flinch. 60% chance for them to get flinched by the Iron Head. Iron Head hits everything and also just has good power and stab and all that. It's Jirachi, it's annoying. But Pokemon's base 100. You it's just filthy like that. And then 25% chance they're fully paralyzed. They don't get to play Pokemon. And that's what the sub is there for. Like, if you find a way to thread in a sub because they're trying to set up to, like, get stats over the Jirachi, you just negate that. Leftovers heals you up. Also, as you're para flinching them, Leftovers heals you up. With the base 100s, your two, three hit KO Pokemon. Fire Punch for a touch of coverage. And then Healing Wish. If it's just completely lost for the Jirachi, best thing you can do fully heal the Pokemon that comes in, and then just kind of reset. So, Jirachi, like, if you get this Healing Wish off after Paraflinch, and, like, you get a KO, you stun a Sweeper or something, and they just make them hate life, and then you go into the Healing Wish, and now Jirachi is effectively, like, a plus two or something. It's plus two and a half. It does weird stuff. So, yeah, this is why I don't play Mythicals or Legendary or Free Format. Shaman's another reason. Once again, Serene Grace coming in. Uh, Seed Flare has a 40% chance to lower Special Defense. That's 80% chance. Pretty much always dropping the special defense by 2 on the opposing Pokemon, thus doubling your damage. That's not fair. You just 2-tap everything. And also, when Shaman becomes available and you show it to this girl in Floraroma Town, that's how you get the Grace of Dia Flower. So that's how you get the Skyform Shaman for competitive use. Yeah, even tanks, like, you can break through them down, so... Um, Air Slash, once again, 30% chance to make the opponent flinch. This idea, Timid, 127 speed, that's not fair either. So, Air Slash, 120, Life Orb, Stab, you're, like, two-shotting Pokemon, and it's a 60% chance that goes off because of the Serene Grace. Earth Power for coverage, Substitute, because, again, we're, we're playing a mean format right now. Anytime that the opponent tries to set up, you punish them for it on a sub, because... We're just playing dirty Pokemon right now, and then now you get a get-out-of-jail-free card while they only have a 40% chance to act against you, or they're just straight-up getting KO'd or something like that. Uh, a couple flavors for the Shaman. We do have the Choice Scarf. Choice Scarf would be more be on that modest side because what's going to do anything about that? So, more damage, locked into the Air Slash, but untouchable speed plus one speed boost, maybe even like lower agility Pokemon, other scarfs, they're not going to catch you. Had to do the Garchomp check really quick, 333, this is like your new god number. Depending if Garchomp even sees a lot of play, I don't know if like Togekiss or Fairy Weirdness changes that, and if you're in a legendary Pokemon, or like a legendary format, does Garchomp see play? I don't know, like I don't play this because it's, it's complete madness, but yeah, 353, um... Like, we can maybe even get weirder with it. Gengar is a 110 speed. So, I mean, you're never going to catch the, um, Starmie. Like, Starmie actually saw play back in Generation 4. Maybe it gets play again. So, never catching that 115. Sneasel's also 115. Gen 5, Gen 5, Gen 6. Who uses Progly? Gen 5, Gen 5. God, Gen 5 ruined the game, didn't it? Mega, 110. So, technically, you're never going to need those 12, or not even 12, those 8 EVs? I don't know. And then you can also go Timid Specs, but, like, Specs, if you're going 1.3 times damage on Life Orb versus 1.5 on the Specs, Life Orb is pretty much going to do the same thing, except in, like, maybe really weird super effective scenarios, where it's a one-shot super effective with the Specs, where it isn't with the Life Orb. Also, Life Orb eventually burns you down, but, um, yeah, and then also you can open up another move option on the Scarf or on the Specs. Psychic. I don't know. Take your pick. It's... It's Shaman. It's it's not a fun it's not a fun game when you're playing with these Pokemon. Darkrai. So Dark Void is gutted. Dark Void is unplayable. 50% accuracy still hits both Pokemon, but it doesn't really matter. So now we back to Hypnosis on the 60% accuracy, and even then the Wide Lens not really mattering because it's not that you get a flat 10% accuracy. So Hypnosis doesn't go to 70%. It goes to 66%. Do you even want Wide Lens? I don't think so. I like the Life Orb. So, it's like, you're you're pretty much gambling almost the entire game on a Hypnosis to put them to sleep. So, 60% chance right there. Nasty plot while they're asleep, and then everything dies. Once again, like, Thunderbolt is the new Ice Beam because Skarmory, if Skarm Bliss or just Skarmory goes nuts, uh, this does get tanked out by Blissey, but Blissey still doesn't want to fall asleep and get, like, plus 6 on. So, 
what does Blissey do against Darkrai? Probably nothing. I don't play Mythicals. <laughs> but again, like the, the fundamentals of Pokemon hold over. Bad Dreams also taking over, so that breaks Focus Ashes, making Darkrai very difficult to deal with. But at least it's not unstoppable. Like, Darkrai almost feels fair right now if you consider RNG fair. It's not an 80% chance you lose the game, it's a 60% chance you lose the game. So Nasty Plot into plus two Dark Pulse with Life Orb also KOs Garchomp. So if it's not Scarf Garchomp, you just get that natural outspeed on the 125, 135, that's it. So why run Ice Beam when you're neutrally KOing something as fat as a Garchomp on the plus two Dark Pulse, which is guaranteed after you get Hypnosis, which means Thunderbolt is really the only thing you need for coverage. Um, after that, we have Manaphy. A lot of flavors of Manaphy. A lot of weird things the Manaphy can do. Tail Glow, Surf Ice Beam, that's a thought. Because, like, Surf, at least a neutral, that plus three is crazy. Jolly, 100 speed. Not a lot of Pokemon be catching that. And if you get outsped, then that's kind of whatever anyways. But, yeah, like, one, like that, that's, that's getting two and a half times. Like, you don't stop it. It's effectively a thick anti-setup Pokemon to where it's like, yeah, you, you're trying to set up. I'm just faster than you because I'm going plus three. No matter what you do. Swords Dance? Oh, that's cute. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, Surf, Ice Beam. Like, really, Dragon Dance, anything that's gaining, like, speed and offense is kind of the only thing that's scary. Because at some point, you don't tank everything on base 100s. But for the most part, base 100s even un uninvested. Pokemon is fat. That's why I recommend Endure Salak Berry. So you go Tail Glow, eat the hit. Now, if that puts you in Salak Berry range, because, like, a weird super or maybe, like, a plus one attack. Oh, Salak Berry, now you're unstoppable. What's going to go 1.5? Well, except for Scarf Garchomp, but... We can play around those. Like you just don't int into Scarf Garchomp with a Manaphy. You just eat the first hit, go Ice Beam, and then maybe everything pops off. Like, that could be extra wacky, where it's like, okay, Scarf Garchomp hits you. You survive because base 100s, Ice Beam. I don't know the damage ranges. I guess we could check those. Okay, so nothing really Salax you, but it's like a cool thought. Either way, you just win on Ice Beam. Like, how much does Ice Beam do? Uninvested is pretty much KO, so like... You can even do some weird stuff. 200 spec. Like, yeah, like if you're going plus three, you just win the game off of anything, anyways. So, I mean, like, I don't know. Maybe this makes you a little better in some situations. Maybe you just want this. Or maybe just do this and make keep the game easy, like we've been showing with the Mew and stuff. But yeah, like, the, the ideal situation is Tail Glow, Endure, Salak Berry, Unstoppable. Um, if they try to throw Garchomp in early, Ice Beam, Endure, Salak Berry, maybe. Like, it's going to be hard to get the Tail Glow, but at that point, you already got a KO on Garchomp, so any Surf Ice Beam damage while outspeeding every Pokemon in the game, that's free. If they only have, like, a non-Scarf um, Shaman left, or even, like, a Scarf Togus, you're hurting them. So you're at least getting 1 plus with this in, like, the worst case scenario. And that's going to be it for now. Since Celebi is going to be transfer, Arceus is going to be transfer if they allow it. There might be some weird restrictions on Pokemon Home. And then we'll see how the rest of it plays out. But there we go, guys. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.